There it goes. Hello, and welcome to a priori story timeless. There's a couple swimming sea creatures here an orca and a dolphin, and a decidedly not sea creature, Saki, to join us. You okay, you said limb buddy? We'll be reading <coughs> a story by Wairimu Grace. This is called How Maui Slowed the Sun. You ready? One evening, Maui and his brothers were making a hangi for their evening meal. This is where you heat up the stones and you bury them to uh, slow cook your food. <clears throat> they had just finished heating the stones when the sun went down and it quickly became too dark to see. Maui was annoyed with having to eat his food in the dark. He stood in the light of the fire and addressed his people. Every day we have to rush to do our chores and gather our fo food before the sun sets. Why should we be slaves to the sun? I will catch the sun before it rises and teach it to travel slowly across the sky. But one of the brothers was quick to criticize, not believing Maui could possibly do such a thing. It would be impossible to catch the sun. He's much bigger than any bird you've ever caught. The heat and flames would surely burn you to death, said another. I think he's got sunstroke, another added, and they all laughed. When they had quieted down, Maui took the sacred jawbone of his ancestor from his belt and waved it in the air. I have achieved many things that were thought impossible. Gaining fire from Mahuika, catching the greatest fish in the world, descending to the underworld, and many more. With this magic jawbone, gifted by Murirangwangwa, and with your help, I will succeed in conquering the sun. The majority of the people agreed that Maui had achieved many great feats, and they decided to help Maui in his quest. The next day, Maui and his Wamau, that's like his extended family, collected a huge amount of flax. Maui then taught them how to make flax ropes, a skill he learned when he was in the underworld. They made square-shaped ropes, tuamaka, flat ropes, paharahaha, and twisted the flax to make round ropes. After five days, the ropes were completed and Maui said a special karakia over them. It's like an incantation and it went something like this. Taranui tararoa, tarokaha taratoa, tara hede ai e tamana tuiara. During the night, Maui and his brothers hoisted the ropes and traveled toward the east where the sun first rises. They hid under trees and bushes during the day so the sun wouldn't see them approaches as they approached. They collected water and calabashes as they traveled, which Maui said was necessary for their task ahead. On the 12th night of travel, Maui and his brothers arrived at the edge of a huge red hot pit dug deep into the ground. Inside the pit, Tamanuitera, the sun, was sleeping. The brothers were silent, terrified at what might happen if he awoke. Maui immediately ordered his brothers to build four huts around the edges of the pit to hide their long ropes. In front of the huts, they used water to soften the clay and build a wall to shelter them. Maui and his brothers then spread their flax ropes into a noose, only just finishing before dawn, when the sun was due to wake. When Tamanuitera rises and his head and shoulders are in the noose, I will call for you to pull tight on the ropes, Maui instructed his brothers. One of their brothers became worried and wanted to run while he still had time. Why are we doing this? He asked another. It's madness. We'll be burnt alive. If we run now, we might escape with our lives. 
The two brothers tried to sneak away, but Maui caught sight of them through the corner of his eyes. If you run now, the sun will see you when he rises from his pit. You will be the first ones to die. There is no turning back. The brothers had no time to answer. The sun had begun to wake and was rising from the pit. They quickly ran back to their huts, grabbed hold of their ropes, and hid behind the wall of clay, trembling as they waited for Maui's orders. Maui hid and watched. Tamanuitera slowly emerged from the deep pit, not knowing that a trap was set for him. His head went through the noose and then his shoulders. Maui suddenly jumped from his hut and yelled to his brothers, pull on the ropes now. At first, the brothers were too scared to come out. Maui yelled again, quickly before it's too late and we are scorched to death. Just then, the sun peered down to the edges of the pit and saw Maui standing before him. Tamanuitera was furious. He hurled a ball of fire towards Maui, but Maui ducked, holding tightly to his rope and once more chanting his karakia. Toranui, Toroloa, Torakaha, Torotoa, Torahere, Ai, A, Tamanuitera, Waka Maokia, Maokia, Tita. The brothers jumped from their hiding places, grabbing the ropes just before Tamanuitera could free himself from the noose. Ah! The sun roared in anger. Maui fought off the intense heat and moved to the edge of the pit. He raised his magic jawbone above his head and brought it down hard on the sun. Magic forces from the jawbone flashed like a bolt of lightning. Why are you doing this to me, cried Tamanuitera. From now on, you will travel slowly across the sky. Never again will the length of our day be dictated by you, Maui replied. Tamanuitera struck, tried to struggle free, but again, Maui showed him the power of his magic jawbone, and Tamanuitera finally gave up the fight. Maui instructed his brothers to let go of their ropes. Tamanuitera traveled slowly up into the sky, tired and beaten. The days became longer for Maui and his people, giving them plenty of time to fish, gather food, and do their chores. Maui's power and ability could never be questioned again. He had succeeded in taming the sun. From that day until this, Tamanuitera has always traveled slowly across the sky. <laughs>